In the district's northwest Columbia Heights, new construction has brought new business, even in a bad economy. But there's still good retail listings that are going vacant because many small businesses can't get the money to open up. Even the best of the applications, uh, they have a hard time finding money. In fact, they can't get it. Robert Moore is president of the Development Corporation of Columbia Heights. He was eyeing potential tenants at a small business seminar set up by D.C. Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton. So in addition to access to capital, we also give you access to information. People were networking and offering advice to each other. Beverly Thomas, one of the few female owners of a small construction company, was urging everyone to network like crazy. Everybody's looking for a job, but it's really who you know. It's not what you know, but it's who you know. Alfred Swells went into business as a paint distributor, but where did he get the money? Now, if everybody will tell you that if you don't have it yourself, then there's only three, two other places you can go. Friends and families in a bank. <laughs> You're willing to work, um, you know, 90 hours a week or more, then, you know, go for it. Eric Nelson started his website, ReliableBestBusinesses.com, to recommend good contractors after his widowed mother kept getting ripped off. So I said, well, let me get a database together so she can use. The bottom line, small business ideas are bubbling everywhere. The key, says Columbia Heights' Robert Moore, is the flow of startup money. Well, we're hoping to get better. The, uh, the president has put some more money into the Small Business Administration. To, he's taken it up from an 80% loan to a 90% loan, which is good. But still, getting the lenders to do it is, is, is the real problem. Tom Sherwood, News 4, Washington. That does it for News 4 at 5. Thank you for watching. Coming up, a life-saving mission put on hold after a mining tragedy. Jim Vance and Doreen Gensler are next with News 4 at 6. You're watching NBC4, live from the area's leading news station. This is News 4 at 6. Uh, I've landed here in Washington, and, um, you know, I'm very excited about that. McNabb officially introduced as a Washington Redskin today. Our new number five says he's starting a new chapter in the book of Donovan. A 13-year-old brutally beaten by a driver while police say he was just playing a game of catch near a street. And a water main break is causing problems for some commuters tonight. The broken main tore a big hole in the middle of a major Tyson's Corner Road. Good evening. I'm Doreen Gensler. Steve Handelsman has a report on that mine tragedy in West Virginia. Thanks, and good evening from Raleigh County, West Virginia, where we've just learned a short time ago there will be a further delay. Rescue officials' plan A here is to punch a thousand-foot-deep borehole into the mountain to see if any of these miners, in fact, survived yesterday's blast. They were saying it was going to be technically difficult. A short time ago, they said they won't have the hole through, the first hole through, until 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Four miners still unaccounted for means an agonizing wait at the upper Big Branch mine. We're hoping that we can still, by a miracle, recover uh, some miners. And we're not holding up much promise because they're in by where the other victims were. The missing four haven't been seen since 25 of their fellow miners died in yesterday's explosion. Presumably, it was methane gas. The mine has a history of violations for improper ventilation of methane. The blast was so powerful, it killed men on a transport train and twisted the tracks and fouled the air. President Obama was at a prayer breakfast this morning. Pray for the safe return of the missing, uh, the men and women who put their lives on the line to save them. One of those known killed is 62-year-old Benny Willingham, set tire next month. He had a cruise booked. But he loved the mines. Besides his family and God, this was his life. He loved working. He loved getting in there and digging in coal. Now it's digging that might save Benny's buddies. Boring holes down more than 1,000 feet to check the air in the mine for methane and hope survivors of the blast made it to the safety chambers recently put in place. They may have gotten to a refuge chamber, so we can't say that it didn't work yet. The chambers have enough air for at least three days. Officials say they can bore a safe shaft into the mine by then while anxious loved ones wait. The families of the four miners who hopefully have survived this disaster won't find out now until tomorrow evening the latest on their loved ones because officials here say even after that so-called borehole is punched into the top of the chamber of the mine where the explosion occurred, step one is to test the air for methane. That won't tell the officials here if the miners survived because if there is methane, the men could have taken refuge in those rescue chambers.